All right, today we're gonna to be doing the uh, mantis shrimp fly. This one will be uh, going up on the site pretty soon. We're gonna start out with a uh, Daiichi 2546 size four. We're just gonna get a little tan thread and just start some thread right here behind the eye. Not doing anything too crazy here. So next thing we're going to do is just get some uh, medium B chain, just cut out two little pieces and we're going to get these, this piece of B chain secured right behind the eye of the hook. You can use B chain, you can use uh, dumbbell eyes, lead eyes, really whatever you want on this pattern depending on how deep you're fishing, how fast you need this pattern to fall. I did a couple earlier with uh, some brass eyes for myself, so now we'll just make a couple with some bead chain eyes. All we did was just get some X wraps and some helicopter wraps on here. Just make sure these eyes are good and secure. Not really going to go anywhere on us. You don't really need to leave any space at the front of the hook either. We're not going to put a weed guard or or anything up up at the front, so that'll all. Uh, at some point here get covered up. We're just gonna work our thread back to just on the bend of the hook here. And we can add our egg sac. So we're gonna make a little bit different egg sac than we made on some of the other patterns. We're just gonna take some uh, orange EP fiber here. Um, you don't have to use EP fiber, you can use, um, um, what's the hair called? I can't think of it. Whatever, uh, use EP fiber. <laughs> that'll uh, that'll work. I think of the name of the other hair that is escaping me at the moment. But all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take out a little bit of uh, EP fiber, trim it down into a fourth of itself. We have just a little bit here. All we're gonna do is just take it, hang it off the back so it's just slightly facing upwards, tie it right up the shank, little ways, fold this piece back over, and then tie right back down on itself. Oh, now I remember the other one. Uh, Congo hair is the other one. I don't know why that name escaped me, but you could do this with orange Congo hair. It'll be a little bit cheaper than buying the uh, EP fiber. So all we're going to do with this hair is just come a little bit behind where we tied in and just trim out. This is going to be our little egg sack, so not bad. So now we're going to get our uh, EP shrimp dub brush. This is the uh, two inch. If you were making this much smaller, like if I was going to make this in a size six or a size eight, I would use the uh, I believe it's a point seven five uh, that they make this in. It's either a point seven five or a one inch, but we're going to use this two inch for uh, this size four. Comes out to about the perfect size head. And we're just going to tie it in right here at the back of the fly. Work our thread a little forward, and then get our thread out of the way. We'll take our hackle pliers. And we're probably going to get maybe five turns of this brush on here. Uh, you don't want to get this brush too thick just because you want it translucent enough to where that orange is really going to show through. That was the whole point of putting the orange there so the fish could see it. So if you, uh, if you put too much on here, it's, uh, it's not going to shine through enough for you. Oops, I dropped my... Botkin, so we'll just use our botkin to pick some of these fibers out. Just make sure we're not trapping too many of them. Probably do two or three more turns here. Yeah, I'll do one more turn and then say that's good.
And if you're doing a little bit bigger of fly, say you're doing a size two or something, I mean, you might go with a few more turns. Um, but just, just keep it translucent enough so that you can still see that, that orange showing through. We're just going to try to separate some of the fibers here and tie this down. Good and secure in there. Just get our bad pair of pliers or bad pair of scissors, cut that out. Trim out some of that hair. And we'll just take our bot can again, just make sure we don't have any trap fibers. And we'll just wrap back on this head just a little bit. Make sure everything's nice and secure. And we're just gonna work our thread back to the front of the eyes. You'll notice as we tie certain materials in, we'll keep working our thread back to the front or back to the back, because we're trying to build up this body as much as we can. We're eventually gonna dub the body, so I'm trying to build up as much so I don't have to use as much dubbing. So. Make sure all this looks kind of even. There we go. And see, you can still see the orange show through. And when this gets wet, the orange will even uh, show through even more. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get some uh, goose biots. These ones happen to be white, just cause I couldn't find a tan color of them that I really liked. So I decided to just take the white and color them with a Sharpie. We're going to take one biot at a time and just kind of tie them in. These are going to be our tail to our mantis shrimp. So we're just going to tie them in reverse here at the front. So we're just going to do one that's straight and then we're going to do two that are crooked on the sides to kind of look just like a little shrimp's tail. I mean, this could be a mantis shrimp, this could be a regular shrimp. I just call it a mantis shrimp. But once you've tied all three of these in, it looks it looks just like a little shrimp's tail. This was a uh, idea that I got from watching uh, Drone Lee tie some of his flies. He does a, uh, a candy mantis fly that uses this technique. Looks awesome looking fly. So, as you can see, He's kind of looking a little bit now like a shrimp's tail. And then we'll just tie the rest of these biots in going forward. Again, just kind of build up that body. Get this all good and built up a little bit here. I'm just going to take my uh, my gold Sharpie. This color came out exactly how I wanted it to when I colored these uh, tails in. All we're going to do is just color these white biots. Hit the tops. Hit the bottoms. I pretty much do this with all of my mantis shrimp flies unless I can find the biots in the right color that I want. Normally I can't, so if you can just color it in with a Sharpie or a, uh, or a Copic marker, works great. The Sharpie's a little bit better than the Copic just because it stays on better, but give our tail a little trim here. And that completes our tail section. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add some uh, some eyes. Again, just some little mono eyes we made ourselves. All I'm gonna do is just kind of bend my eye just a little bit, so that it's already kind of poking out some. And I'm just gonna start it on one side of the hook here, and I'm gonna kind of get it so it's only going about maybe. 
halfway back on our head. So we'll just kind of tie it in. Again, work our thread forward. We'll just use that monofilament to help build up our body. Cut it out here at the front. I know what some of you are saying, you're like dubbing. It's pretty cheap, why is he building it up? Because I don't like having to buy dubbing all the time. So. Less I have to buy dubbing, the better it is for me. I'll take another one, we'll bend this other eye, and then we'll add it to the side. Kind of make sure they look a little bit lined up. Seem to be. And we'll get this lash down. Make sure they kind of stay lined up. Did they look at? This one's a little long. Yeah, that's fine. Again, we'll trim out our monofilament. Keep going. Messed up our tail a little bit there, but it's all good. Work our way back forward. Come all the way to the back here. And all we want to do is just take each eye and pick it up. And we're just going to get some wraps in behind it get it away from the head a little bit. So we're gonna add pretty good amount here just because of the way we tied these ones in and how much I want them sticking away from the uh, head. So. so you can see now it's kind of out and away from the head. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Looks pretty good. Eyes are a little bit uneven, but nothing the uh, nothing the fish are going to care about. So the next thing we're going to do is get a little bit of monofilament thread, and we're just going to pick off some thread here. You know, I mean, you you don't have to use monofilament thread. You could use uh, just a real thin piece of uh, regular monofilament line or whatever you have. Uh, you could even just use, say, take some two tan denier thread and do the uh, do the same thing with it. And it's not going to hurt if you just use some tan thread or something. We're going to get this sitting out the back. Let's get a couple more wraps behind this one because it's kind of sitting back in towards the head too much. And it's starting to look shrimpy. The next thing we're going to do is grab our thin skin. This is going to be the, uh, the shell back to our uh, mantis shrimp here. All we're going to do is just cut ourselves just a small section. So not very much at all. You know, maybe just a little bit thicker than uh, the amount of thread that we've already got tied in there. We're just gonna make a little tie-in point by just trimming down one side of our thin skin. We're gonna get it on our hook here. If I can capture it. It's a little tricky with the uh, hook point your way a little bit, but it'll work out. Get it on there. Perfect. All right, and now we can move on to our uh, dubbing. So this is EP Shrimp Dub. Uh, the reason I went with the EP Shrimp Dub is just because the color will perfectly match the Shrimp Dub brush. I was having a little bit of trouble and some of the other colors matching the 
dubbing to the dub brush. Obviously all the companies make uh, different dyes. Uh, so we just went with EP just so the color would match. And it's got a little bit of flash in the uh, built into the dubbing. So that's nice too. I wanted the body to have a little bit of flash since we're not adding antenna or anything to put some crystal flash in there. So our flash will be in the body. So we're just going to make a little dubbing ball here at the back of the uh, fly. Let's add a little bit more. And all you're going to want to do is just, just build this up and just small little amounts. We're going to build up a section here, then add some legs, then build another section behind those legs. And then more legs, and then more sections. So just take your time. It's dubbing. All right, so that, that looks like it's probably enough. So we'll take a, some rubber legs. All we need is just one for the moment. Put it on the hook like a little V. Top side here. Take it, just split it to either side of the body and wrap back on it. I'm gonna wrap back on it enough just so that the legs kind of stand out at least to the sides. And then we'll take a little bit more dubbing and we'll kind of cover that up. So you want these legs looking like they're coming right out of the body for you. We're just gonna add two sets of legs onto this pattern. Uh, but if you wanna add more, I mean, you can most certainly add three or four legs if you really wanted to. Kind of get this set back a little bit. All we're gonna do is just dub that body. Make sure our legs are up and back. And that's one set of legs done, so. Again, a little bit more uh, dubbing on here, and then we'll add our, uh, our next set of legs. I like my mantis shrimp to kind of be about the same size throughout. Well, if you ever look at a mantis shrimp in the wild, they really don't, they don't taper down like a regular shrimp, in my opinion. Unless you catch one of the huge ones that's like, you know, 15 inches long. But the little ones, for the most part, you know, they look about, about the same size throughout. Again, we'll kind of split our legs. And wrap back on them. Try to wrap back as much as you can on them. Get them nice and secure in there. Now we got two sets of legs in on, in on here. Make sure that one's not too low. Now we're just gonna do dubbing all the way here to the tail. So again, we'll just build up little dubbing balls as we go basically all the way to the front. Just kinda get our legs out of the way here. And I know you're saying he's not the best in the world at dubbing, and you would be correct. I don't work a whole lot with dubbing. You know, a bunch of you freshwater guys, you're probably like, oh my god, he's, he's dubbing terribly. Well, Long as the uh, as the dubbing stays on, doesn't ever fall off. I'm okay with it. Had a little bit of uh, tech technical difficulty there. Our uh, camera kind of shut off for no apparent reason. Uh, all we did, we just added the second pair of legs here, uh, and we're just going to continue dubbing until we get to the tail on our fly. So, keep adding dubbing until we make it all the way up to the tail. 
Uh, and if you're wondering, this is a brand new fly compared to the one that you were seeing before. Our camera kind of shut off without me knowing it. Uh, not even sure why it just shut off, but so I did the whole last fly and now we're just doing a new one. But same thing, get our dubbing all the way here to the tail on the fly. Then we're going to go ahead, we're going to take our thin skin, fold it over our whole body, kind of try to pull down pretty tight on the thin skin, and then get a couple wraps in on it. Also, you want to make those pretty tight. Then we're going to take that monofilament we tied in. We're just going to go ahead and wrap the monofilament to make some uh, segments on the body along with make sure that the thin skin stays right where we want it to stay. Now we're just going to wrap this forward all the way right up here to where we tied in the thin skin and then we're just going to capture that monofilament with the wraps. And then all we're going to do is just cut out our thin skin. Try to just cut it as closely as you can get it. And we're just going to take, we're going to throw a couple half hitches right here at the front. Just because it's a little hard to whip finish with the uh, with that tail kind of in the way. And we're going to uh, we're going to epoxy on the bottom of this fly anyway, so doesn't really matter these are half hitches. Let's go to the bottom of our fly, take our loom thin, hit those thread wraps. This will ensure the uh, whatever weight that you have is not going to go anywhere either. And we'll just let that go. Alright, now we can take our legs we can trim our legs just a little bit longer than our head. Kind of just pull them, make sure they're about where you want them to be. Um, I don't think I trimmed the tail on this one, so let me just trim the tail a little bit more. There we go. Then we're going to take a little bit of Loom Flow. We're going to get a little bit of loom flow right here on the top of the shell for the crab. This is just going to help make sure those that little tie-in point there for the uh, thin skin doesn't come undone. Along with it helps the, um, the monofilament stay in place in, in case it gets cut while you're fishing. You know, a little snapper or something hits it, it can cut it really easily. So that just helps it stay in place if it does get cut. And then the last thing we're going to do is just take our little loom brush and we're just going to brush the bottom portion of this fly. And all we're trying to do is just pick out some of the fibers to kind of give it a little bit of bugginess, you know, to make it look like they're just little legs on the bottom. You know, add a little bit of movement to the bottom of this fly. So we dubbed it in there, just kind of, kind of swish it around. And hit it on all sides here. All we're looking to do is just pick out some fibers. That should be fine. You don't have to pick out a ton. And the last thing, just you know, hit your hit your tail again. Uh, these natural materials don't always take the uh, the markers the best. As long as you hit it a couple of times, um, they will stay gold after they dry, and then even after they get in the water. So you just want to make sure you give them about two coats. But that's the uh, that's the mana shrimp. It's a great fly to throw at uh, throw a bonefish. You can throw it a redfish, permit. Um, here in Stewart, I catch a lot of snook on it. I throw it a. Uh, I like jetty rocks and stuff and I, I end up getting a lot of snook on this pattern a lot of snapper a little grouper stuff like that so it's a great fly uh, obviously you can use it as a regular shrimp as well 
uh, and a pretty easy tie. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, see you next time.